Bachelors of Science, Human Nutrition and Dietetics, and, uh, and Ms. Michelle Carrington is going to present on behalf of that program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and let me thank you for joining us on this very important webinar series. Dr. Kohal said, I am Michelle Carrington, and besides being a part-time lecturer in the faculty and a coordinator of, the, of this program, and also a registered dietitian by profession, so you can imagine my joy and excitement about the inclusion of this new program into the FMS family. I'm also very pleased to share with you some information about this, the Bachelor of Science and Human Nutrition and Dietetics. And I, my hope is by the end of the evening, most of you will be convinced as to alternative careers in nutrition and dietetics. Besides medicine, there's other careers in nutrition and dietetics. I'm not taking away from medicine. And also consider, really truly considering enrolling in the program and be part of the history making process because you'll be one of the, you'll be the first cohort to graduate from the BSc in human nutrition and dietetics. So feel free to post your questions um, in the chat and I'll do my best to answer. But the question that may be on your mind is why the BH, uh, why the Bachelor of Health Science and Human Nutrition at the UWIK Phil campus and at this time, and I think Dr. Seeley has put it in, 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 in a good perspective for you. He's nicely summarized the burden of diseases. And the reality is, is that we do have a rising incidence of chronic non-communicable diseases and complications that associated with these diseases from poorly managed conditions. And they're predominantly attributed to lifestyle factors, one being diet. Recent research in the Caribbean has suggested that about 60% of females and 20% of males are either overweight or obese. And we know to all too well that overweight and obesity are major predisposing factors to the other chronic diseases. Then of note, there's about 24%, 27% of adults in the region who have hypertension. If we bring it home to Barbados, there's about 16.4% of our population, of our adult population, who has diabetes. Now, I am sure that almost all of us know of someone who has the condition that has nutrition implications, who have a condition that has nutrition implications, either ourselves or someone. And if we really examine the situation, we would understand that numerous disease states, so from the chronic diseases to the acute diseases, they mostly have nutrition implications. So really and truly the need for such a program is very, very, important. Now, in addition to the worrying trend of escalating diseases, there's also a dearth of adequately trained nutrition professionals on the island. And I'll give you an example out of Barbados. Um, currently, there's about 17 registered dietitians with our Barbados Paramedical Council. Out of those, those 17 dietitians, four have retired and four are actually for no longer live on the island. So you can do the math. And this trend is playing out across the region. I speak to my, co my colleagues um, across the region. This, the, 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 the sentiments are similar. There's insufficiently trained nutrition professionals that can provide nutrition care to our populations. Most of us would have had to go over to either North America or Europe to be trained in this profession. And that, with that will come along huge expenses expenses. Now, if you're a home, in your home country, you, you can eliminate some of those expenses that typically come along with, with having to study abroad. So therefore, when you look at what's really happening, we have, we have demonstrated and we have shown and we have developed this, this um, program to address the region's needs for trained dietitians. So our program is approximately three and a half years if you complete the program full time or within a six year period, you can also complete it part time. We've made provisions for part time um, applicants. On completion of our program, the graduates will be eligible for registration as a dietitian by the Barbados Paramedical Council or an equivalent council regionally. You may be asking what are the career opportunities that are available to graduates on completion of this training? And I must say there are numerous. Um, our profession continues to evolve. It's an evolving profession, it's very dynamic, and there's always some new, new um, nutrition development. There's also some new development in the nutrition world. 
So there's traditional opportunities and there's also contemporary opportunities. And I'm going to share some of you, some of them with you, but you would appreciate these are not, this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination. So you'll, there's opportunities in the hospital settings and other healthcare facilities. So for example, your long care facilities, and we know that we have an aging population and, and these are persons that need to have some sort of access to care as well. There's opportunities within private health clinics and if you're, if you're looking at the clinical setting, you can actually even go on to do further training. This will be post-graduation um, to specialize in a particular area. So we have dietitians that focus on areas such as pediatrics, and we have critical care dietitians, we have weight management dietitians, there's oncology dietitians, and the list goes on. Um, and there's also opportunities within the community health and public health settings. There's roles in the school nutrition and school feeding programs. And I mean, within recent times, you've been hearing about um, the, the obesity epidemic that's taken over our schools. There's opportunities in teaching and health promotion and food and nutrition related businesses and industry. There's also opportunities in research and Graduates can also establish careers in food product development as well. Like I said, this list is by no means exhaustive. We'll have some additional um, offerings to show you on our website. Dr. Cole, the next slide, please. Thank you. So why our program? What makes our program so special? And I really consider it special because we've been able to to, to, to build a program that is unique to the Caribbean and that would be a benefit to the Caribbean. So basically, we have developed our program so that it aligns with the CAMHB accreditation standards for nutrition. We also offer a blended teaching mod modality. So we, some instruction will be provided face-to-face -face and, and in the online environment. We're also going to be possessing a strong clinical and research focus, and this spans from the didactic um, component to the clinical component. Our clinical component, for example, our, our internships, we are going to be having at least 60% of the work that is related to the, in the clinical setting. This is very significant for me because I am very pleased about what we've been able to do by integrating a supervised professional practice experience, so our internship. And we've been able to do this in the clinical community and food service settings. We are, to, we are going to be having this starting from the to supervise practice experience will start in the second year two, summer of year two. And we've been able to integrate this well. Most programs across the region, persons would complete their training first or they'll do their didactic component and then Um, about 50% of persons are admitted to internships. So for us in, the re in, in Barbados and the rest of the region, if you're enrolling in Cave Hill, you don't have to worry about vying for internship. You know that your internship is secure and we are having internships in, Dr. Koha would have mentioned them earlier, in a variety of settings. You'll have diverse and varied opportunities. We have already have partners, uh, persons who partner with us, to ensure that these internships are reality. We okay, alluded to earlier, we'll be also accepting full-time and we'll be also accepting part-time students as well. And we will, we're starting very modestly. This is a new program and we wanna make sure that we get it right. So we're gonna be having a low student enrollment, just about 25 persons um, will be enrolled in the program. So this will allow for optimal student to staff ratio. You will be taught by diverse faculty. Um, you'll be taught by persons who are already in the profession uh, who can guide you well. And we have even gotten some support from some international colleagues who would have helped us to, to help to craft this, 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 um, this program as well. And they are very excited to come on board and help us to establish our program um, well. They have established uh, established human nutrition and dietetic program in, in their particular areas. So students are really in for an exciting time. You know, um, this program 
It's going to have a strong didactic foundation. You're going to get very experiential experience learning opportunities. And of course, access to research, which is going to be very important because this now will help us to advance our practice here on the island and make decisions that are based on our population. So that practice-based research will be very, very, it, it will be key in helping to, us to move forward in the nutrition world. So besides um, the didactic training and, and, and the clinical experiences, there are other attributes that persons entering the profession should have. And I would say um, you, you should possess a strong interest in health and healthcare. If you're gonna come into this profession, you, you need to have that. You should be passionate about nutrition, really passionate about nutrition. And if you can recognize, I, I do have a great passion for nutrition. It has been a journey. You should be able to motivate others and problem solve. You would appreciate that there are going to be challenges associated. And you're looking at behavior change in a lot of situations. Behavior change is not easy. So motivating others is going to be very critical. You should possess a good communication and interpersonal skills. So possessing good inter communication and interpersonal skills are key. But if you just simply want to make a difference, because we can learn a lot of these things as we move along, if you want to make a difference in the lives of people, um, I would definitely invite you to enroll in what we call this helping profession for the upcoming semester. Thank you.